Hello students, today we are going to discuss pharmacology of histamine. This video is second in the series of videos on autocoids. Now the word histamine is derived from the Greek word histos. Histos means tissue. So histamine means tissue amine. Histamine is a biogenic amine that is produced by the tissues. Now histamine is an autocoid. It is a local hormone as it is produced locally in the body at a particular site for example at the site of allergy at the site of tissue injury it acts locally where it is produced and it is also degraded or it is broken down or metabolized locally now let's discuss the role of histamine now histamine is a very well known mediator of allergic and tissue injury reactions like for example Allergic conjunctivitis, which is characterized by red, irritated, itchy, watery eyes. Then allergic rhinitis or hay fever with symptoms of runny nose, sneezing. Then allergic skin reactions or the hives. Two, life-threatening reactions like anaphylaxis. Histamine is also involved in very important physiological functions like secretion of hydrochloric acid now histamine in the brain produces wakefulness and it also regulate cognitive ability that is general general mental capability involving problem solving reasoning learning etc now apart from this histamine also regulates food intake and it reduces appetite now synthesis of histamine Histamine is a biogenic amine. It is synthesized from amino acid histidine. It is metabolized by the process of oxidation and methylation. Now let's understand how histamine is stored in the body. Now histamine exists primarily stored in the mast cells and also in the basophils that is in the white blood cells. Now majority of histamine remains stored in the mast cells. Now histamine also exists as non-mast cell histamine that is histamine not stored in the mast cells. Now the sites or the location in the body where histamine is found. Now tissues rich in mast cell histamine are skin, lungs, liver, gastrointestinal mucosa and placenta. Non-mast cell histamine occurs in the brain it also occurs in the anterior chromaffin like cells in the gastrointestinal tract then epidermis and in growing and regenerating tissues of the body as histamine is required for the growth and repair of the tissues uh, now let's study triggering factors that activate mast cells and cause release of histamine the first and the most important triggering factor is the allergic reactions now here allergens that cause allergic reactions are the agents like smoke, dust, food articles, chemicals etc. Now these allergens can stimulate B lymphocytes. Now once stimulated B lymphocytes produce antibodies. Now antigen antibody complex activates mast cells and the mast cells release histamine. Now very important to remember that allergic reactions occur only on repeated exposure to allergen. Now tissue injury caused by trauma, insect bite, bee sting etc. is another important factor that can cause release of histamine. Now apart from this drugs like uh, tubocurarine, morphine, atropine, vancomycin also stimulate release of histamine. Now polymers like dextran, polyvinyl pyrolidon, then surface active agents like uh, tween 80, compound 48 by 80 also release histamine from the mast cells. Now there are four main types of uh, histamine receptors namely H1, H2, H3 and H4. Now all these four receptors are G protein coupled receptors. Now in this video we are going to concentrate on H1 and H2 receptors as these receptors are the main targets of clinically used drugs. 
Uh, now let's uh, uh, first talk about pharmacological actions of histamine mediated by histamine H1 receptors. Now H1 receptors primarily mediate inflammatory, allergic and anaphylactic reactions. Now allergic reactions are characterized by mild to moderate symptoms like runny nose, sneezing, skin rashes, redness, edema or swelling, difficulty in breathing to severe reactions like uh, fall in the blood pressure that can cause shock during anaphylactic reactions. Now anaphylaxis is a severe form of allergy. For example, allergy to an antibiotic penicillin can cause anaphylaxis. Now let's first study the effect of histamine on the blood vessels. Now, as we all know, innermost lining of the wall of the blood vessel is called as endothelium. Now, this endothelium is made up of endothelial cells and H1 receptors are located on the endothelial cells of the blood vessels. Now, histamine causes vasodilation. It produces increased vascular permeability and on intradermal injection, histamine produces triple response. Now, histamine produces marked uh, dilation, that is noticeable dilation of smaller blood vessels, including arterioles, capillaries and venules. Now, this dilation of blood vessels is termed as vasodilation, that is increase in the diameter of blood vessels. The blood vessels, they expand. Now, histamine binds to H1 receptors located on the endothelium and mediate release of endothelium derived relaxing factor that is nitric oxide from the endothelium and this nitric oxide produces vasodilation. Now vasodilation causes local increase in the blood flow producing redness of the skin. Now vasodilation uh, also produce fall in the blood pressure. Now excessive fall in the blood pressure causes shock and uh, this shock can be fatal. It can occur during anaphylactic reaction. Now further histamine causes increased vascular perme permeability. Now as the blood vessels expand, spaces between endothelial cells increase and plasma flows from the blood to the tissues. So histamine causes exudation of plasma from blood vessels to the tissues. Now, accumulation of plasma fluid in the tissues causes swelling, causes edema. Now, inflammation of tissues is characterized by redness and edema or the swelling. Now, inflammation of nasal tissue causes sneezing, runny nose in allergy. Another important uh, response of histamine Injected intradermally, histamine produces triple response, that is three responses are observed. Red spot uh, surrounded by the wheel and flare. Now red spot in the center at the site of injection is the redness due to marked vasodilation. Now surrounding the red spot is the wheel. Wheel occurs due to accumulation of fluid causing edema or swelling. So redness and edema constitute inflammation and flare is the further spreading of the inflammation in the wider area. So this response is the triple response characterized by the red spot, wheel and the flare. So when the histamine is injected intradermally, red spot occurs immediately within 10 seconds at the site of injection and it occurs because of intense or very strong capillary dilation. Now the wheel appears within one minute. It is a localized edema uh, due to accumulation of uh, fluids and it occurs due to passage or exudation of uh, plasma fluid from the capillaries and venules in the tissues. Now, this is followed by the slow appearance of the flare. Now, this is the spreading of edema or inflammatory response in a wider area. Now, this flare occurs due to axon reflex. 
that is sensitization of nerve endings in the affected local area. Now these sensitized nerve endings further release calcitonin gene related peptide that is CGRP and substance P. Now these neurotransmitters they further induce vasodilation and further they cause spreading of inflammatory response in a wider area. Now apart from this effect of uh, histamine on the bronchial smooth muscles, now stimulation of H1 receptors on the bronchial smooth muscles produces bronchoconstriction. Bronchoconstriction causes difficulty in breathing, another important sign of allergic reactions. Uh, now the effect of histamine on the sensory nerve endings. Now as discussed, histamine sensitizes H1 receptors on sensory nerve endings in the skin. Now this produces pain and pruritus. Pruritus means itching. Now pain and pruritus are also very important features of inflammation and allergy. Uh, then the effect of histamine on central nervous system. Now non-mast cell histamine is found in the brain. And histamine in the brain produces wakefulness, that means keep us awake and regulate cognitive functions like problem solving, analyzing, learning and also reduce appetite. Now H1 antihistaminics are used clinically. Now H1 antihistaminics counteract actions of, uh, that means pharmacological actions of histamine at H1 receptors. Now these H1 antihistaminics are primarily used to treat symptoms of allergic conditions like allergic rhinitis, allergic conjunctivitis, urticaria and as an adjuvant therapy in the management of anaphylaxis. Now after H1 receptors, let's discuss the pharmacology of H2, histamine H2 receptors. Now histamine H2 receptors are located on the parietal cell. Uh, this is the figure that shows the uh, parietal cells. This is a parietal cell in the yellow color. So H2 receptors are located on the parietal cells and parietal cell produces hydrochloric acid. Now hydrochloric acid is one of the most important component of gastric juice. So parietal cells are present in the gastric glands and gastric glands are located in the wall of stomach. Now look at this figure. Now these are the anterochromaffin like cells containing histamine. Now uh, anterochromaffin like cell is located in the gastric mucosa. Stimulation of this anterochromaffin like cells by gastrin and acetylcholine releases histamine. Now histamine binds to H2 receptors present on the surface of the parietal cell and this causes increased cyclic AMP that is a cyclic adenosine monophosphate generation. Now this cyclic AMP it further activates hydrogen potassium ATPase pump in the presence of calcium ion. Now this hydrogen potassium ATPase pump is also called as a proton pump. Now stimulation of this proton pump releases hydrogen ions that is hydrochloric acid is released. Thus histamine stimulates parietal cells to produce hydrochloric acid. Now H2 antagonists are used in the management of uh, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, gastritis and in the management of gastric ulcers. So this is in brief on pharmacology of histamine. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.